How's it going, everyone? Tim here, Tier D Adventures. Hope everyone's all in well out there. As always, thanks for tuning in. Much, much appreciated. So today we're going to be doing a little work on the Element Night Runner here. Got a couple new um, parts. Going to change up some wheels and do a couple other little things. So first here we have the Element IFS Correction Kit from Night Customs. I got the kit there from my manufacturer. Got my man thrown to get everything printed up for me. So it comes with uh, the new standoffs here. And it does come with two different styles of skid plates, just a regular flat skid and the tier D skid here. So right here between the stock mount and the new 3D printed mount, you can see the 3D printed mount is noticeably shorter. So what that's going to do is get the whole IFS system um, raised and tucked up inside the vehicle there uh, for better ground clearance and everything like that. Um, picture real quick right here just to show the differences. Um, stock versus IFS correction. You can see all that ground clearance of that. So really excited for this um because that is one thing the ifs it does hang really low so this is going to help out dramatically and it's very simple we're you know basically taking the diff out swapping out a couple brackets in addition to that the other little thing we're going to do here is take the um link here for the steering we're going to unbolt it from the top see how it's mounted on the top there of the knuckle we're going to put it underneath so it's going to help get everything up, keep all the steering and everything else good there. And normally, how the servo is mounted from underneath with this new correction kit, when you, you're going to need to take the servo all the way out, and then you're going to now put it in from the top side and mount it through the tops. So first up here, um, get your body off and everything here. Uh, and what we want you to do is go ahead and remove um, these top four screws on the outside here on the top of the IFS mount. And also go ahead and unplug your servo. I'm not going to a mine because it is in its correct location and probably go ahead and remove the battery tray. After you get those four bolts out, you're going to get the vehicle upside down here. Go ahead and get the wheels off then go ahead and pull the stock front skid off and the rear brace here right behind the IFS. So let's get those off. Okay, once you got those pieces off, next thing here, you're going to take the screw out of the drive shaft and just kind of pull the drive shaft off and set it to the side. And then next, you're going to want to uh, go ahead and unbolt the steering link from the servo here. And then if you are still in complete stock elements, you're going to want to go ahead and unbolt the steering servo and remove the stock steering servo out. So you got the servo removed and then next you just pull off this little piece here, grab a little pair of pliers, go ahead and pull out the pins here. Let's let the IFS kind of sit over here. And next, You'll have four screws here for the upper arms are mounted. So we'll get all four of those removed. Once you get all those undone, just like that, pull the front diff assembly out. You can go ahead and pull these off and set them up to the side because they'll probably fall out um, just moving it around. Then, so you would remove all four of these right here and then boom, you would take off your stock mount. So we can see the difference there from the stock mount to the modified mount. So we'll simply start reassembling the exact same thing we just did. Install all four of these bolts. Go ahead and set the front diff assembly right back down in there. It is up to you. You can either keep assembling here or you can flip it over and bolt this assembly down. So I am. I'm going to, for reassembly, I'm going to just lay this over real quick and get the diff housing mounted on there. So we have the assembly bolted in. So we're going to go ahead and put the drive cups back in here. Go ahead and reattach both your upper arms. Next, we'll go ahead and slide in the drive shafts here. Go ahead and get the lower arm installed and then put the slide pin back in. Same with the other side. We got both of the arms installed there. Um, suspension's not falling off or anything like that. Um, go ahead and mount your servo in place. So you're just going to slide the servo in from the top and bolt it down. Then you're going to come back underneath here and right here on the steering arms on both sides. If you're looking at your IFS right now, you'll notice that this steering bar is on top of the knuckle. You're going to want to unbolt both those back in and then you're going to want to bolt it up from underneath. So you're going to go ahead and get both of those bolted up. And at that point, get your servo and everything else plugged in and powered on. And then you can flip it back over um, give it your steering link here because you are going to have to adjust it just a little bit. And go ahead, um, make sure your steering servo is centered. Uh, your trim is set to zero. Make sure your steering is straight and then go ahead and attach um, 
the drag link to the steering servo. Once you got your steering and everything all centered there, then we can go ahead and finish putting the rest of this back together. You get the drive shaft in, drive shaft insult. Then we can just go ahead and finish button this up here. Get that on there. Go ahead and get the skid attached. Next, go ahead and get the uh, wheels put back on. Now it's time to uh, put in the battery tray that you took out. So might not be applicable in every situation here, depending on if you've already changed out your battery tray or not. So if you take your stock battery tray and go to set it back in where your drive shaft is there, you might see where it rubs a little bit. So if it does, take your battery tray, take a Dremel, take a file, take some razor blades and do just a little bit of trimming, a little bit of, you know, notching out right there to get in that little bit of clearance to make sure your drive shaft doesn't rub. Um, I did not have that issue. I already have a 3D printed flat um, battery tray in here. Um, so if you also have some of the other flat battery trays that are out there, you might not have that issue. If you are using the stock one, you are probably going to have to trim that just a little bit. So it won't take, doesn't take much. Get it trimmed, make sure you're clear. Get the battery tray back in there and you're good to go. And now we have an IFS with some much needed clearance gains. And everything here, I am super, super happy with the way just everything's really kind of came out there. In regards to that, there were also some modifications that it mentions doing on the uh, upper arm here. A little bit of trimming to make sure the um, bracket on top of the knuckle um, sets flush. It does set it slide up at a little bit of an angle. And now with the pivot balls being underneath there, that angle does play a little more of effect. So um, if it does have too much bump steer uh, for you or just want to eliminate it, there is... Um, it does mention shaving that down to where that mount sets flush. So look at that. But like I said, overall, I'm happy with it. Everything there, I'm super happy. It was mostly the clearance. That's the basic thing. I'm gaining clearance. I'm not sending this truck at excessive speeds. I'm not jumping it or anything like that. So honestly, the bump steer doesn't bother me in the slightest. Um, maybe that's just me and how I feel um, on this truck, but doesn't really bother me there. Uh, next thing there, you'll notice with that clearance now, it does set up a little higher. So if you don't like that ride height and want to get it back, you know, lower it back down, you can. You just simply take off the, the drop down bracket for the IFS shock and then mold it to the shock tower like you would on any other normal shock. But I've left mine for right now. Um, overall, I think it hits the look and the ride height exactly where I want it to be. So super happy with this and it was a nice affordable kit. And Pretty simple. That was a quick little walkthrough. I think when I first did the initially install on it, it took me about 10 minutes. I said, I will link uh, both of the files down below. And I hope you enjoy. If it's something you were looking for, you know, for your IFS, just need a little more clearance or anything like that, definitely recommend that kit. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel down below. And as always, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Much, much appreciated. Till next time, everyone, be great and crawl on.